What's good, y'all, man? Welcome back, man. So it's time to get into the college football rankings that just dropped. I was waiting on this tonight, man. And I it's very, 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 very interesting to see what the college football playoff committee came up with. Some things I agree with, some things I don't. Let's talk about it. All right, shout out to Tulane, man, for being ranked at number 25, having a pretty good season so far, man. Shout out to them out there in, in, in New Orleans, man, doing anything. Army also having a pretty good season, 9-0. They've been spectacular, running the ball, throwing it. Um, very special shout out to them. I know some Army fans are going to feel disrespected, especially with them being undefeated and potentially a Boise State team who's going to actually get the playoff spot um, above them with one loss. But like I said, it comes down to can Army continue to win out? We'll see what happens with Boise State. But you guys got to think about Ashton Gentry, box office. People want to see him in the playoff. Kind of what it comes down to, in my humble opinion, for the group of five thing. All right, next up at 23, who I still think they're a little bit overrated, and that is Missouri, all right, at 23. We will remain to be seen, but y'all know how I feel about Missouri. I like the, I like Luther Bird. I like Brady Cook, but I just think they're an overrated team, basically uh, with how they've lost, the games they've lost, how they've looked against stellar competition and opponents, got waxed by Bama. I'm just not a big fan of Missouri. That's how I feel. All right, next up, you got LSU versus South Carolina. This is very interesting because I know Lenore Sellers went down, actually, in that game, but LSU actually beat South Carolina in their place. I know some people felt like the refs uh, had it in uh, LSU's favor, yada, yada, nonetheless. But the biggest thing, they dropped like seven spots LSU did from, I think, 15 uh, to 22, man. So tough for them, but they still have an inside track in order to, to get to the um, SEC championship game, believe it or not. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to watch for them. Uh, South Carolina's been doing their thing. They're actually going to play Clemson uh, to finish out the season. As you guys know, that kind of border battle between those two teams out there in South Carolina, man. So that's going to be interesting to see what both of those teams can do. Clemson, you're kind of a little bit in trouble a little bit, especially if you're trying to get in the college football playoff because you don't control your own destiny with the addition of an SMU and they're undefeated and the NNA schedule looks very weak. You know, it's going to be tough for you to kind of, you know, leapfrog over them and get into an ACC title game. It is tough, but that is a reality situation. So you got to hope they lose one or maybe even two games in order to get there. Next up, Louisville. Shout out to them, man. Big win beating Clemson. I do agree with that one, which does not really make sense to me. You have Louisville over Clemson, who beat them head to head. But then you have South Carolina over LSU, who uh, LSU beat head to head. But to me, that doesn't really make sense. I know South Carolina looks better in the last few weeks, but LSU did beat them. I would put the head to head. That's just me. All right, next up, you got Washington State, who's in the Pac-12, kind of in a tough spot. He's been playing some really good football. They could throw it. They could run it. Um, but the thing with Washington State is they're in the Pac-12, not really a conference champion. Got to get more teams in there. So they're kind of a rock in the hard place. They will have to continue to win and hope some more controversy and more upsets and things happen up here in that top. All right, next up, obviously, Kansas State over Colorado. Same thing. That's why I don't understand this one right here. Kansas State beat Colorado, obviously, now when Travis Hunter went down. Kansas State actually does not have the inside track to get to a Big 12 championship. Colorado does with only one loss this year. I believe Kansas State has two, so they have to hope that they lose. They're going to play Utah this upcoming week. That will be an interesting game to watch out for as well. But Kansas State at 16, but I think Colorado, like I said, you feel good because you've got a potential chance to win a Big 12 championship and get an automatic bid. They've looked good. They went on the road, picked up a big victory last week in Lubbock, beating Texas Tech. They look like a formidable team, man. We're going to continue to watch. Next up, obviously, you got Texas A&M. Again, we'll see how they're going to look this week. I, I want to watch the game, be able to get my analysis and everything. Like I said, the biggest question for me continues to be Le'Veon Moss. How are they going to look outside of him? How will Marcel Reed or Connor Wigman look? Can that defense continue to maybe carry the load a little bit with the injury? Maybe the quarterback's figuring it out. We're going to find out. Very good defensive front with Nick Scorton, who remains to be seen. And then if you're SMU, you're 14, you're like, man, we still on the outside looking in. Hey, bro, all you got to do is just win out. If you went out, if you SMU, you get to the, to the um, ACC title game, you have a potential chance to clinch it without the committee having to do anything. They have to grant you automatic bid because you are a conference champion. So if you SMU, handle your business, keep doing what you're doing, lean on Jennings, and you'll be able to get in. Next up, Boise State. I talked about them a little bit. And that's what I was saying about the Army situation, man. People want to see Ashton Gentry. Um, had another spectacular performance, man, yet again, week in, week out. He's elite, man. People want to see him, Madsen, and see that Boise State Broncos team. So they keep winning. I know it says 13, but they really projected uh, to number 12 because they would be a group of five highest rated uh, winner to get in. So if you Boise State just went out, you'll be in. Next up, ugly, 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 which is Georgia right now, man. At number 12, really be 13, but just a tough spot to be in for them right now, man. 
Um, especially after losing. We talked about some of the things that's been going on with them, right? Carson Beck smiling after the game, not a good look. Jake Pope celebrating, obviously, with some of his uh, uh, friends and family, but looked like he was celebrating with Ole Miss. Just not good looks, man. Um, but like Kirby said, we're going to Tennessee, man. I got to lock in for that, man. So if you're Georgia, you got a potential chance to get right back in this. You got to beat Tennessee at home. And I just did a video about the rumor of what's going on with Nico, and he could potentially be out of this game. Not expected to play, according to Chris Falson, uh, the Bear. Uh, not expected to play with a concussion injury, so he might be out. If he is out and Georgia loses this game at home, your season is over. That's just it. Your season is over. You should not be losing to Tennessee without this star quarterback on your home turf. There is no excuse. I don't care how bad Carson Baker look, make a quarterback change. You should not lose at home against Tennessee. Straight up. Next up, you got Ole Miss. They rated them pretty high. Uh, shout out to them. Obviously, big win for them, beating Georgia right in the thick of things. We talked about Josh Payne, what he had to say about Ole Miss potentially winning a CFP playoff. I'm not going to go that far just yet. Got to see a little bit more, see them do some other things. But you will take that result, man. If you Ole Miss, you control your own destiny, man. Got to finish the season strong. You know what I'm saying? Got to continue to win games. You can't have the up of beating Georgia and then lose to a lowly team. Got to handle your business if you will miss, and you got an inside track to get in. Now, Bama, they moved up as well at number 10. Like I said, up and down this year, have beat some good teams, lost to some ugly teams. Vanderbilt, you know what I'm saying, um, have been able to beat good teams uh, so far this year as well. Uh, putting it on LSU, putting it on Georgia, uh, being able to you know come out with a win in that one. So, Bama, control your own destiny too, man. Last three games, Mercer, Oklahoma, Auburn. Handle your business, you're in. Next up, Miami. I feel like this is a good rating for them. I am still a Hurricanes fan, as I said. But like I told y'all, that's just it was just too fitting them playing Georgia Tech right there. I just felt like Georgia Tech was going to be able to beat that Miami team, um, but especially with Haynes Kings playing. He just gives them a different vault, and I, uh, different, uh, like, vault of energy. Now, he was not 100%, has an AC uh, joint shoulder sprain, but he was able to give them enough. Running the football, 90-plus yards, a rushing touchdown. A true freshman, Aaron Fowler, came in. Made some big time throws on third down, did his thing, man. It just and then the improvement of their run defense holding Miami to their lowest rushing yard total of the season. It was just this this defense is way improved under, under defensive coordinator Tyler Santucci, and we've seen it. It was tough for the Hurricanes, but the wake up call they needed, I think they'll be just fine, and I still think they're going to get in. Next up, you got obviously Notre Dame. Some people like Notre Dame, some people don't. I like their defense, a very elite defense, one of the best in the country. I think that's going to help them out a lot uh, going forward. And it's going to be a team to watch, right? Riley Leonard, Jeremiah Love. They got the pieces to be, to be potentially dangerous. Next up, if you're Tennessee, you're in a tough spot, man. You might not have Nico. Got to do what you can do, man. But the committee, they're not going to be able to deny you. Even if Georgia's a three-loss team, they can't deny you, especially you go on the road and beat them in a hostile environment without your star quarterback. Got to give credit where credit is due. BYU, you're very fortunate to be in a spot. You really should have lost last week to Utah. Very, very, very fortunate. Um, what happened at the end of that game. Um, but nonetheless, you'll take it. You'll take the spot. Um, and, yeah, that's all I got to say on that one. Next up, you got Indiana. Now, this one doesn't make sense. Indiana, Penn State. Now, Penn State is ranked above Indiana, even though they have one loss. And then Indiana is still undefeated. Best start in program history. I feel like they're kind of being slighted just a little bit. Now, next week or, or one of these upcoming weeks, they're going to play Ohio State. We're going to find out a lot what Indiana is made of when they play, obviously, the Buckeyes, who's at number two. Won't be easy. But if they can beat them, they definitely got to get in, man, um, humbly. Even if they lose the Big Ten Championship and play another team, you know what I'm saying, like Oregon or something. The question then would be, if they do pull it off, would Ohio State be out, out of the college football playoff as a two-loss team? Lost to two of the best teams in the Big Ten. That would be a question. All right, so we already talked about Penn State. Texas at number three. A lot of people don't like this because of their strength of schedule, who they played. Um, but nonetheless, man, Texas looks like one of the best teams in college football. I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, their best win is probably Vandy. Um, best best win for Penn State is probably Illinois. But Texas is one of the best teams. Got to give them their credit, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? And it's been tough, but they're going to play more. It's not a competition, man. I think they are one of the teams to beat. Last but not least, you got Oregon versus Ohio, uh, Oregon and Ohio State. Those two play earlier. One, one, uh, one point loss. Love that those two play, man. I think some of the best teams. You know, we look at Ohio State, Quishon Jenkins, and what they can do offensively with Jeremiah Smith, Emeka Abuka, Trevion Henderson, or Oregon, Dylan Gabriel, slinging the football without one of his best weapons in Taz Johnson, getting the ball to Evan Stewart, running it with Jordan James. Oregon has a very formidable football team. I agree with them being number one. So that is my reaction officially. Real quick, I think I got 20 seconds. My, my, the matchup I will watch out for the most is this one if it does happen. 
Indiana versus um, Alabama at home, potentially in the snow. Woo, that'd be a heck of a matchup, man, humbly. And Penn State Ole Miss, that'd be a heck of a matchup, man. Two really good quarterbacks. Who will win that one, potentially, in Nappy Valley?